The Hunterian Museum at the University of Glasgow is home to thousands of artifacts. Individual objects vary from Roman coins to modern medical equipment. These are all fascinating examples of technology and history that attract thousands of public visitors every year. As well as being interesting to look at, the objects held at the Hunterian Museum are also used by experts from different disciplines for teaching, to conduct research, and to learn more about the world we live in. We are going to focus on one exhibit held on display here. We'll hear from three experts from different fields of study on how they would use the same exhibit to aid in teaching students. The object we'll be examining is a skull excavated from a stone burial cairn found on the island of Erin. The skull is believed to be Neolithic, 4,500 years old, and is known as the Clachaig skull. First, we'll hear from an osteologist who will explain how the age and sex of the skull was determined. As a forensic anthropologist, I'm interested in what the human skeleton can tell us about a person. We can tell a number of things about an individual, even just by looking at the skull. For example, we can tell that this individual was a male and that he was most likely a young adult when he died. How can we tell this just from looking at the bones? Well, we can look at certain features on the skull. So for example, this individual has a prominent brow ridge just above the eyes. In females, the forehead would be much smoother and more rounded. If we look just behind the ear here, we can see a lump of bone that you can feel behind your own ear called the mastoid process. And we can see in this individual that again, it's a big lump of bone and it projects from the skull, which suggests a male. The jawbone in males are more likely to be big and square. We can see here what looks like a square chin, but we're missing some of the jawbone, so we're not getting the full picture. Again, looking back at these jawbones, we can have a look at the teeth, and these can give us an indication of age. A few of the teeth here are broken or missing, but there's enough to see that this person had all of their adult dentition, and they're not very worn down. Because this individual lived many years ago and would have eaten a much coarser and abrasive diet, their teeth would have been worn down over time and we'd be able to see this tooth wear if this was an older individual. Now let's hear from a chemist who will tell us how old the skull is and how we can find out what we ate 4,500 years ago. My subject is analytical chemistry and I use different techniques to find out more about what we ate in the past and to calculate when people died. So I could take a small bone sample and then break it apart into its chemical components using acid and heat. And you can see here where the sample was taken by scientists who are investigating this skull. We can then use a technique called mass spectrometry to identify different types of chemical elements within the bone. We look at radioactive carbon, which decays at a constant rate over time and can be used almost like a clock to tell us that this man died around 6,000 years ago. We can also look at other forms of carbon in conjunction with nitrogen in the bone that comes directly from the food that he ate. And we can tell that he probably ate a diet that was rich in meat with a little bit of fish added from time to time. Knowing this kind of information can help us piece together huge lifestyle changes that occurred thousands of years ago, and it can help us understand our origins as a society today. Our final expert is an archaeologist. We'll now learn some broader based information gathered from the skull on how humans lived in Neolithic times. As an archaeologist, I'm interested in the life of this Neolithic person. Firstly, what we can tell about them and their society from the physical remains, associated artifacts and the archaeological site where they were found. This skull, recovered during the excavations of a chambered cairn, a distinctive form of prehistoric stone monument that was used to house the dead, found with the bones of adults and children, along with a polished stone axe head and two ceramic bowls. When he was alive, people lived in small, crofting-like farming communities and buried some of their dead together in communal tombs, of which over 20 others survive on Arran. People on the island were closely connected to mainland Scotland and Ireland. We know this from the movement of stone resources like axe heads that come from Northern Ireland and from a distinctive volcanic glass, Arran pitchstone, used as a tool stone which is found in small quantities across Scotland that appears to have had ceremonial importance. Since he was dug up by Professor Bryce over a hundred years ago, Clackaig Man, as we call him, continues to intrigue us. On Arran, a bronze reconstruction of his head by local sculptor Marvin Elliott is on display in the local museum. Facing this ancient ancestor brings us directly in contact 
with the lives of Scotland's early peoples. So we've heard from three experts, all from different parts of the university. One from the College of Science and Engineering, one from the College of Medical, Veterinary and Life Sciences, and one from the College of Arts. Yet they all can use the same object to teach in their own subject area. So the next time you visit a museum, consider the different experts who have studied the various objects on display and what we have learned from their work.